All right, everyone, just let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you very much for, for coming um, and welcome to the first session of the Drupal Showcase track. Um, what, we, what we wanted to do today is to present about uh, this case that, that we built last year for Lush Japan. Uh, and we're very excited. I was just telling Greg, the, the track chair, uh, we got very excited when we got approved to talk about the session. I hope you guys are very excited too to be here today. I think the, Drupal, the, the keynote was awesome. And uh, I really, uh, just a quick question or just a quick poll. Who is the first time DrupalCon? Or, all right, cool. And who is um, evaluating Drupal or trying to start starting Drupal now? Or Okay, good. All right, guys. So um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, both of us talking here. So I'm uh, going to mix a bit. Um, and uh, we probably will finish not, um, like, it's going to be quite fast, I think. So we're going to have enough, lots of time for, for us to discuss and have, have some questions about the, this case. So uh, today, the story, it's more like a segue story. So if you just, I don't know if this microphone is good, but uh, if you just Google around, you're going to see that there is a Lush story, Lush UK story about using Drupal already. So we're not going to talk too much about that because it was the first story, but the focus, like I said, is talking about the Lush Japan adoption of Drupal on their commerce platform. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I think this story is really how uh, four interesting elements got together, how we mix them together and make it work. Not, not only us here, but all the agencies involved and Lush itself. And the first one is a global retail organization, Lush. Let me do this. Second one is uh, putting an e-commerce digital strategy. So that's another challenge here. Drupal, using Drupal for that. And the last challenge is Japan. Is there anyone from Japan here? Okay, good. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and you guys can help me out the case or confirm what I'm gonna say. Um, so before we, we continue, a little bit of an introduction about myself, Philippe Rubin. I'm head of operations for CIT in Asia Pacific. I've been working with Drupal for the past six, almost seven years now. I'm Brazilian. Maybe you got that by with the accent. Um, I lived here in the US for a few years as well before moving to Australia. Now I'm in Sydney, so I'm be traveling around. And you may meet me or find me in Tokyo or Shanghai every other month as well. So I'm a bit. Uh, flying over all the time. And uh, and I think I just saw in the keynote and that reminded me of my own story. So I'm one of the lucky people um, or, or proud, I guess, that had Drupal changing my life. I think I remember about seven years ago when my boss called me on a, on a Sunday, say, look, there's a, there's, a, there's a customer in US, they want to use Drupal. And I was like, use what? And uh, you know what, they need someone there in New Jersey next week. Can you go there? You speak English enough? Well, or kind of well to go there. Let's, let's, let's tackle that. We need someone there on site. Can you? All right, let's do it. I never came back to Brazil. I met my wife, had a baby in the US, had a family. Uh, so Drupal changed my life. So since then, I never did anything else different than Drupal. Very happy to, to be part of this community as well. <coughs> So uh, it was, was good to see Drup, uh, Drup, uh, Dries keynote and, uh, and remember my story too. So I hope you guys also uh, will have some similar stories. Um, and have a right. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I'm Everlife. Uh, I'm a Chinese, a part of Chinese uh, CNT. China team, CNT. tea, yeah. Uh, my English name, Everlight, just translate from my Chinese name, Yong Dui. Yong means ever, and Dui means right, so just translate my, from my <laughs> Chinese name. So, uh, some new, uh, uh, new friends often ask me, you are, Ever right? Never long? I, I just told him, yes, I'm ever right. Ever right is me. Okay, so uh, since they can quickly to remember me, 
with uh, based on our name. I hope uh, I also ho hope here. And uh, this is my first time uh, ever a Drupal call here. Very excited to be here today and be able to share with, uh, this story. Uh, also, this is my first time in U.S. Uh, and during the flight uh, of the Asia, play, uh, Asia Airlines, my wife uh, kept asking me, did you understand what is the broadcast speaking? I, I told him, sorry, my, my darling, I, I just understand the ladies and the gentlemen and also Smida. <laughs> so she, she said, so uh, now we can eat on the plane. So how to do after landed? And she said, I think we will be dialing uh, uh, of the uh, staff uh, uh, staff oceans, but I just can smile and think in my heart, heart uh, baby. I I think we can. Uh, we we have bring some uh, noodles from China. I think we. So uh, today is the third day uh, we come here and delivered on Sunday. Uh, me and my wife still very good here, and she can. Uh, she has uh, drinking the Starbucks coffees, uh, which she liked every day, and also she uh, got a lot of shopping bags from the outlets yesterday without me. So, and she wanted to uh, to go to a big list outlet of the other side of the city. So. Guys, don't tell he, uh, don't tell her how to go to. I just need to limit my credit card. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Everett. And uh, just last night he was asking me for some help on Chinese restaurants. If anyone knows to help him, he was like, I couldn't, didn't have breakfast or anything. I said, look, I don't live here, but let's find something. Let's ask everyone later. Thanks, Everett. Um, guys, we're gonna. Go ahead with the introductions here. CIT, the company that we work for. So both of us work together. So ever right, a Drupal developer. I'm a head of operations. I work together at CIT. It's a global company focused on, on enterprise. So uh, we, we do most deployments of Drupal, looking large scale end to end. So we start with the agency strategy uh, all the way to all the services involved in Drupal. Uh, we are relatively big, I think, so 2,000 employees now, most of them in Brazil. Uh, so that's, that, that map is important, not only to advertise CIT, but uh, to tell you guys how we did for this project, how we worked for this particular project. So the company is Brazilian, started 20 years ago. Most of people are there, about 1,800. We have plenty of offices here in the U.S., including here in Los Angeles area. Uh, I live in Sydney. The Ever right is in China, Shanghai, and we have our folks in Japan. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring my Japanese colleagues to, to speak today, but uh, but that's how we are distributed across the globe. Uh, in terms of Drupal, we have about 300 Drupal talents, so that's how we manage to to deploy and develop all those uh, focus on the large enterprises. All right, enough about us. Let's talk about Lush. Um, so Lush is a UK headquartered company. I'm just gonna briefly, well, maybe it's better if I ask, who doesn't know Lush? Okay, so good I brought this. Uh, so it's a UK headquartered company. It's uh, they basically produce fresh, uh, handmade cosmetics. So we look at soaps uh, or different type of products for cosmetics, and um, and they're based in UK, but they are global now. They are in about 80 countries, 50 countries, 800 stores. In all those countries, including U.S. here, it's it's awesome. I was just talking to uh, where is she? Uh, how I found out about Lush? Either your girlfriend or or yourself, if you like, and then you just pass by the store, and that's how what happened to me. It's like it smelled really good. Let me find out, and then you remember Lush, and then you buy something to to your to your person, uh, and then um, and then. Um, I think it, what is interesting about Lush compared to other cosmetic companies, not only fresh handmade, 
but it's also their philosophy and their values. So basically, the first thing, they don't do animal testing. So they basically count on, on, on people to volunteer for that. They try to work as much as they can in terms of sustainability for the packaging. So for example, if you buy, go buy a soap, it's not going to have any wrapping or any package. You just grab that soap and that's going to take it. And all the other type of packaging is trying to be more like recyclable or, or post-recycle material. So uh, when we started working for them, it's kind of a, another motivation to work for a company with such values with, uh, with that mission. Uh, um, and also, on the other hand, if you're, like, if you're a Drupal developer or a Drupal agency and you don't have many, many work, you can also get some money volunteering to do the testing as well. So that's Lush. Of course, they have a branch in, UK, uh, in Japan. sorry. And um, like I said, this story is a segue to the UK one, but the vision started in the headquarters in UK. And they put together this strategy, as most of the companies, uh, the global companies, right? So very shortly or very quick, the story about Lush UK. About mid-2013, uh, they started, so the, the CEO, everyone, the company, the marketing department, they decided that they needed to bring the store experience online. What does that mean? Like I said, if you haven't gone to a Lush store, try to find out later. Try to go to one of the stores around here and you will understand better what I'm talking about. But the experience of what you see, the colors, everything, and of course the smell, it's a bit hard to bring it online, but, uh, but the whole colorful experience and knowing about the ingredients, everything, the whole interaction that you have with the product when you go to the store. So they, they had this vision that they want to bring that online because the online selling was not even closer to uh, the, the brick and mortar sell numbers as well. So they wanted to bring that experience online, but not only UK, globally. Uh, so they brought, uh, they involved a few agencies in Europe, I think uh, Commerce Guys, Acquia, Icos, those are the companies that I, that I worked for, for this. So they, they were engaged, probably there, there were other companies I'm forgetting here. They were engaged, they, they helped them to choose Drupal at the time, and they helped them build this, what I'm calling a platform, but basically it's the code base where they envision that will be the most features that uh, all the countries will need. Plus, the most important part is the look and feel, the design, how this user experience is going to be, this global experience that we want. So they put that together, and uh, in Q1, May 2014, yeah, about a year ago, they launched the new Lush UK. And uh, you guys go online later. But uh, that's what I'm talking about when, uh, when we talk, when we talk bringing the experience online. So if you go to a store, that's what you see. And uh, you see nice pictures online, right? And uh, back to the title of the session, and, and you keep seeing that more and more in the marketing trends, this whole e-commerce and content getting together, right? So those, that's one of the things we're going to be discussing here today. But uh, that's, that's how you're bringing, bringing more or bigger imagery, better imagery to your website, videos, uh, blog, uh, specifically for Lush about the ingredients, information about the ingredients, very important on their business to talk about what is that uh, soap made of. So they don't use palm oil, for example, right? So they use more, they, I think all the products are 100% vegetarian, so there's no animal at all, animal byproduct involved. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, having that information connected to the commerce, so that's the content and commerce getting together. So if you search around the product, you want to know more about it, eventually you buy as you have more information about it. So that's the whole experience that they brought together. Uh, interesting enough, there was a, a, another great idea, I, I think, that they brought into this new uh, version or this new experience, which is what they called Lush's Kitchen. Basically, they produce daily different products and they put a different menu every day, almost like a restaurant with a chef. And uh, once they sell out, they're done. That's it. Uh, but the good thing is, apart from that, having custom experience or personalized, you're going to get one of the soaps that maybe nobody else has. Uh, that serves as a lab. At some point, if somebody ordered that, well, that was a huge success. Let's put that product back into the, the mainstream product, right? So uh, that's very exciting to, to see that happening, also happening in Japan. And of course, if you think about it, changing content, so connecting to Drupal, right? Changing content every day, approval workflow, everything. 
So you need a platform to do that as well. So after UK, the decision was okay. We're stable enough. I think we can start. We think we can start going global, right? The first two countries were Brazil, which were not involved, although we are Brazilian. But, but we were first involved in Japan uh, for this uh, rollout. Um, I think also important to say, I think I said before, but uh, they decided to use this platform approach. So they got the code base, they built Lush UK, they tried to make it generic as possible. I have a right to talk a little bit about the, the, the technical requirements or technical components. Uh, but then here's the code Japan, here's the code Brazil, here's the code Korea. So that's the idea. And if you have something that needs to be uh, or it can be generic once you customize to Japan, but can be more generic for the platform. Let's organize the governance and bring it back to the main source code. That's one approach compared to um, creating a distribution, which is similar, but that's another one, or multi-site, which is something that also we, we built for the customers, where we basically put everyone under the same umbrella, including the hosting part of it. But here there was autonomy. And I forgot to mention in the beginning, one of the things, if there's one word, one thing that I want you guys, especially you guys that are evaluating Drupal, one of the things, the, the word that I want you guys to leave this session today is flexibility. So if starting with this, that's, that's what we're going to have in mind when it comes to Drupal. Uh, you have different approaches, you have different options, and we're going to deep dive a little bit about this flexibility capability as well. But that was the first. So we're going to build something, we're going to improve your time to market by building this baseline. And then you have some freedom to customize to your local needs. And then from UK, you go, we go to Japan. Getting to Japan, we're, we were involved, and then we understood their goals. First, of course, implement the vision that was coming from Lush UK. So leverage the Drupal platform from Lush. Uh, but also, as usual with, uh, with any project, especially commerce related, launch with a very aggressive timeline. Uh, by October, so we were engaged around July, by, by October last year, in time for the Christmas sale, so the Christmas sale start in October. So those are the major goals, but then let's go another level under that. But at a high level, those are the goals. So we were involved and then we, we say, look, okay, we can do it, but let's lay out all the challenges and how we're going to tackle them. First one is to replace the existing platform. We'll talk more about it, but basically that was the, the previous website. When it comes to the content and commerce, was way different from what they have now. So that was one of the main reasons that they wanted to do it. But more importantly was the technical part of the platform. It's a, it's a, it was an ASP platform, not .NET, ASP. Active Server Page Platform, uh, and it was very limited in terms of expanding or customizing any change. We need to have a lot of custom development. Very difficult, or it would take a lot of time to to bring integration, like with the new social media, for example. So that was one of the issues with the platform. Uh, and also, the platform was kind of one monolithic application, meaning. Uh, the front end, the OMS, order management system, all the back office for the order management, and also feature phone, we'll talk about that now, we're all together in the same unique ASP application. So that was the first challenge, replace that at, at, to some point, not replace the whole thing. Second one, um, and that's Microsoft. One second. All right. Sorry about that. Um, keep feature phones working. So that's uh, the layout of the feature phone, the dumb phones, right? The flip, flip out phones. I don't know if you guys know uh, my friends from Japan. They, they, they will know. But feature phone is still huge in Japan. Um, yeah, I saw a report quite recently, two months ago that actually last year the feature phone sales or shipment was even bigger than the smartphones. So they're still investing on improving the interface for those new um, 
feature phones. So they, they still got to keep that. Whoever has a business or a user base with that, you still got to keep that. So we, gotta, we had to keep that for Lust 2. Uh, what we be, we've been seeing for some customers that are starting a new, uh, or creating a presence in Japan now, they might not go, but it's really a business decision strategy, but it's still huge. And in Japan, uh, there's, there's a lot, lots of material about that. Uh, it's not only the feature phone, but there's some characteristics about Japan uh, that even there's a, described as a Galap Galapagos syndrome, that things have been developed or have were developed inside Japan that you can find anywhere else. And I think feature phone fits into that category too. So uh, everyone going to Japan market needs to be aware of, of the, the reality there and, and plan for that. So we need to keep that. It was not just come, okay, let's forget about this. This is old. No, this is important for this market. So we got to put this in the plan. If we're going to replace something, we're going to make sure that this is still working. Right. So second challenge. Third one, deep diving a little bit. So decouple that ASP application because the idea is to keep the OMS the same. Again, the management, the back office management, the back office operation team, they still wanted to do the same way they do all the tasks for managing the product orders and everything, all the users, etc. So we, we, they didn't want to go in the first round, the first phase, and change the whole platform right away. They decided to do in a few steps or phases. Eventually, they're going to replace the whole thing. But uh, for this phase, especially because of the time frame, they wanted to keep uh, the back office the same way. So we need to decouple that, meaning let's ignore the desktop front end and bring Drupal on top of it, but make sure that Drupal can talk to this OMS ASP backend. Right? So which is the second topic here. And again, let's not touch the feature phone. That got to continue working. The next one is, uh, well, imagine that. We're bringing Drupal with its own database, right? And, uh, and we already have a live database. We have a bunch of users, a bunch of products and data, a million registered users. So how we make sure that once you log in into Drupal, you have your experience, you're not, not going to have delays getting data from the other database, SQL Server. So how we can synchronize the data, how we can migrate to start with, right? And the site's still running. Even during the project, we still need to make sure that uh, we test the migration, and then we do a freeze in the end, then we do the final migration, right? So that was another challenge to be considered on the plan. <coughs> There's also UX translation localization. Um, the idea is to use the whole design coming from UK, but uh, I mean, you're going to another country, right? So there will be font, there will be small things that you gotta change. Uh, we, we did a bit of uh, getting the, cont the existing content, product information, ingredients from the existing Lush site in Japan, but also getting from UK. And uh, it's not just translating as well. You gotta go and check, okay, can we say those words in the ingredients in Japan? So it's different, like, so it's almost the same thing if we bring it to US. So that ingredient is something that is correct here in Japan, so it's not just pure translation. So the agency that we involved in Japan also had to consider that and discuss with the business in Japan. And ever right to talk a bit about, about that, I think. Um, for solar, we, we, so this platform is deployed on Aqua, and they use uh, Apache Solar, the version is still 3.5, yes. right? And uh, the 3.5 doesn't support the Japanese characters. Am I saying this right? Yes. yes. So, uh, so we had to do some customization. It's not perfect to allow that. The 3.6 already supports that. So there was also this challenge, which, of course, we didn't know when we started. So those things that come up, and I think it's good, you guys, to, to remember once you engage on this, on this journey. Um, less, no, not us yet. Uh, communication, as you, you would imagine. So we have ever right here from China. So like, well, why we have someone from China or Brazilian? But as, if you remember the map with CIT, we have the local team in Japan, which I couldn't bring you here today. But part of, part of the team that implemented this was in China, together with ever right. And I was supporting traveling all the time and, and helping from Australia. But the core team we had in Japan, Lush, of course, CINT, and uh, a vendor to work on the ESP platform, the OMS, and also a creative agency to do the whole translation and everything. UK, we still got to communicate with the headquarters and also the team that created the platform for the governance purpose. 
and in China, CIMT. So how, how we manage that, like the English, the Japanese, everything involved in Chinese, right? So it was another challenge, something that we do all the time, so it wasn't not a bit of a diff difficult for us, but for the customer, it's, it's different, right? So we engage with the customer that hasn't done that before. And the last one, timeline, I said that before, so move quick, uh, so because they want to leverage the Christmas, right? If we missed, then you know, stop the project only next year. No, right? Very aggressive. So with that said, let's deep dive a bit on the architecture. Thanks, Philip. Okay. So guys, did you remember my name? This is a, a simple architecture overview of the, this project. At, at a high level, uh, the architecture uh, includes the following components. The Drupal Commons module is already exist in the UK platform. And the Finish and, finish and the Memory Cache is used for improved site performance. Fuse and heavily use the fuse with op uh, operation manager interface uh, along with the media. So the uh, operation manager can easily manage their products, orders uh, in admin interface. And also adjust, adjust field is used for a user to type their address and also we have custom size uh, new feature, so user can easily find their address by uh, Japan, uh, Japan postcode. And uh, so the, let me see, sorry. Okay, uh, in the outer circle, we have some third party service here. And for the third party service, the first one, Cloudly. Cloudly is an image cloud service and support uh, image transformations like uh, image resizing, cropping, and face detect service. And also uh, behind a CDN uh, with Akamai. And the same code, guys, you know the same code? And the same code was uh, convert the video to support multiple devices. And uh, uh, in our case, we convert all the uh, video to support iPhone and uh, uh, Mac, uh, a PC, uh, iPhone, and other uh, Android device. So uh, when convert, we have uh, save back to cloud in with a low uh, format file to, uh, to provide a CDN access. And Apache Solar, you know, Apache Solar uh, provides a whole site indexing and a whole site searching service with a Drupal. It's great. And SOAP IM is used for client communicate uh, and uh, real time uh, uh, chat for the client service. Google Tag Management. Google Tag Management is, uh, in our uh, project is used to manage multiple Google Analytics uh, uh, settings in, uh, of the fish phone and the new Drupal site in one place. So Google Management can manage multiple Google site uh, settings in one place is fa fairly easily. So, sorry, Bert. Uh, in that particular case, they wanted to, uh, for the feature phone, or our website, they want to track one ID in Google Analytics. Then for the desktop and the, and the, the smartphone, yes. another ID, right? And they yes. wanted to have the same report on the interface. So Google Analytics by itself, the, the simple Google Analytics wouldn't provide you. You have to have a separate report interface. But with Tag Manager, you can associate different IDs and, uh, and, and, and see one single report. So that's, I think, my, at least my f was my first time using Tag Manager. Yes. But that's that what helped them in that case manage different IDs in the same reporting view. Thank you, Philip. Okay, next, here is Google Map. 
is based from the UK distribution, and uh, we just uh, look size the map to Japan and uh, support uh, large shoppers in Japan. <laughs> Mailchimp is used for newsletter. Also yesterday I have got a Mailchimp a monkey head from the deck. Uh, huge it's, it's, huge uh, success uh, there. If you haven't yeah. got it's a good, uh, good uh, gift uh, for, for us. And Twitter, Facebook uh, will be show the latest uh, social com uh, social information uh, for the large shops. And this last last is the important. This is the important part of this architecture is integration with the OMS. And OMS is the last old, uh, last uh, old last uh, site, uh, built with Microsoft ASP and the Circuit Server. So, uh, for in, uh, for this launch, he uh, they just want to keep the old checkout and all the management in their OMS back end office. So. So we need uh, we needed to change uh, create a uh, data synchronization from the Drupal and uh, OS uh, OMS database. Yeah, you, you explain more in the next yeah. slide, right? We're, we're going to deep dive on that one. Yes. Next one, yeah. So, just before, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, just when I said in the beginning, guys. Sorry, please. Uh, especially look at this and. Uh, we, we came with a Drupal code base from UK and we still added more components. We customized a few. We created new modules, like address field in Japan, which is specific for Japan, uh, a few configurations as well. So I think that is a, when, I, when we put this together, it was like, look, this is what Drupal is about. That's what I said about flexibility. So we still come with something that was prepackaged. We still were able to, to add things. And like, like I said, in just a few months, be able to support all the requirements, not to mention all the back office which we're going to talk about. So again, flexibility, I think that's the thing that we can see on this slide too. Okay, thanks, Philip. Sorry for my bad English. So as we said, uh, so one of the cha uh, challenges and the key features of this project is uh, the textures existing AS, uh, ASP uh, Back, uh, front end uh, uh, from the OMS backstop. Uh, so we just we needed to replacing the front end with the uh, Jubo. And so also so there is uh, we have sorry told fish phone uh, and the fish phone they just want uh, we w wouldn't to touch is a feature phone. They uh, keep it and remain the features with the feature phone. So the, sorry. So the uh, complex involved is the data migration of the old site to Jubo, such as uh, migrating the users, products, Orders into Jubo. The so next is the uh, data synchronize uh, uh, between the Jubo and the OMS. When the use, when the manage in Jubo admin interface, they update their product uh, information or new user register on Jubo site or user update their profile on, uh, in Jubo site. It will out synchronize to ASP database. Okay. So next is so for the data, uh, data synchronization, we just need to create a web service to provide an, an API to communicate with the Jubo and the OMS. We for Jubo side, we use the service module. It's very easy to create an API. So for the OMS side, the OMS, OS, OMS ASP team provides the API. But 
uh, we but uh, we can load some coders tell the guy how to connect to the Jubo web service use the OAuth and the rest for okay so uh, and for this section say uh, in the OMS OMS back end so they just want to keep the payment and uh, the check out in the in their side so we need it when the user in Jubo side blows a product and add to card then they kick check out on Jubo side it will auto post the date to the ASP side with the user cookies so the uh, OMS can read the user's uh, card from Jubo then uh, finishes the uh, following checkout and uh, the benefits of the architecture is minimizes the operation uh, of the uh, back of uh, operation user and uh, minimizes the complex PCI because the PCI is also handled by OS OMS side. And uh, for the data migration, uh, I, ha I, ha I had to share, share uh, information with, uh, we just uh, use the MySQL CSV load. Be uh, before we have uh, tried to use the uh, Jubo's migrated uh, module to import the users and the products. But for, uh, for the one million users uh, to import is fairly slowly. So we have tried to use my CSV uh, load import from CSV file is very quickly and uh, uh, finish all the data import cost one hour. But I think for the migrated module maybe more than one hour or more hours. And we just uh, use the split, uh, write uh, some split uh, to transfer the uh, data insert with the field uh, Field hookers structure to get the field uh, tables which used for entirety and uh, uh, as tables. Okay, uh, in this side, it just list a major features and modules added into last Japan, uh, difference with the uh, UK platform. Service, we have uh, said for integration with uh, OMS. Address field, Japanese uh, postcode, it was uh, uh, customized with our team to support uh, address lookup by Japan postcode. Uh, also, uh, in Japan, the the uh, client want to manage their, uh, to see their products uh, uh, freshly after they update their profile in a product detail page or home page. So we use the XPRI and the Aqua project module to auto XPRI the finished cache in Aqua Cloud when the user update their products. But and another issue is happen. What happened is uh, in some pages, the, uh, it includes some block date from the Apache Solar return. So when the user uh, update the product, it will be check the solar to index. But uh, during this index, the date, uh, the page is out of XPLY. So we have load uh, Exploit arch module, extra module based on based on exploit module to support uh, when uh, <coughs> the Apache Solar re index finish, we create create some page cache so the user can quickly to see our refresh product pages. And NetPlus, NetPlus is a, a product limitation service in Japan. 
So we have custom size code to integration with Jubal and uh, Net Plus. So the last cloudly we have told before, he is uh, it is uh, image cloud service and uh, support the uh, image transformations uh, behind the CDN service. We also we can take more about this. Okay, thanks, everybody. Right. Uh, Tinker, we started late, but uh, I don't want to impact the next uh, session or lunch. So uh, I'm going to jump a bit ahead, guys. We, we did prepare. Uh, I know maybe some of you guys will not go to the, the website and check. We did prepare the video. I'll share later with, uh, or just quickly, how the site looks. I think it's just a short video. Uh, but that's that's the experience again because the, the, the session was about how effective this decision from Lush was to bring this experience with commerce. So yeah, we thought about the background, the the technical platform, but with Drupal and be able to do all of that. And those are the components that we use for some of the features. So uh, it's kind of advertising Lush, but but also saying where we're using each one of the components. How does that uh, impact actually what what is happening behind the scenes? Navi Plus, that's your family, etc. So, um, let's just uh, explain some of the features where, where you can see that in the website. Um, go back. Um, all right, guys. So, so that was the, the, the whole how it happened under the hood. But in the end of the day, how was how was the result? How was the Christmas sale, right? That's that's what they wanted. So in the end of the day, we launched the new LushJapan.com uh, experience, so following the the global strategy. So that was a success. We brought the union of commerce and content again, coming from this the same vision and strategy. And more importantly, if uh, uh, if not as as important, is uh, it it was reflected in the end of the, the year. So uh, compared to the previous year, there was a 50% increase on sales online. So everything together uh, actually brought financial results as well. So this is uh, just uh, giving a step that the work was, was pretty good and, uh, and the platform and everything chosen was, was a success. And the platform, and there was all the demand coming, so the whole combination of the hosting, everything that was built, all the decisions made, hold the platform as well for all the peak on the sales. So 20 f there's, the, there's the sales in Japan and then there's a couple of days after they, they can, there's, a, there's a, uh, some, some product with a price off. So there's kind of two rounds of sales near the, the Christmas time. So that's just to compare Lush UK, Lush Japan. So again, keeping the same experience um, that's the the ingredients, so you guys can look have a look in plusjapan.com. The back office was very important. I mean, in the beginning, I myself I was a bit worried, especially when it comes to Drupal. Uh, it's not perfect when it, when you compare it to some maybe other enterprise platforms, or especially when customers such as in Japan they're used to do their things on that way, and how we're going to customize the back office. Uh, in the past, we often would just worry about end user experience. You wouldn't worry so much about the, the operation management experience. So uh, we, we thanks to views, thanks to a lot of things that were built on the platform based code in UK, the, the, the Lush Japan team was very happy with the back office interface. They thought it was even better than, of course, the OMS platform that they had. So it was great, awesome. So uh, they, in, in Japan, uh, my friends from Japan can help me out here, but uh, they, they wanted to have very specific details at each custom field. I want to search for that. So uh, from my experience working here in the US and in Brazil, there you have more uh, more requirements. I wanted to have more flexibility. I wanted to have more. There were more details than what we found in Lush. So we had to customize that. And thanks to Drupal, it wasn't that difficult. It was just playing around with views and then updating one thing or the other, configuring. So that was a, a good thing. Um, another, like, in Japan as well, they want to, even though we, we are supporting the platform for them, we manage the platform together with Aqua, but they wanted to have all the logs, all the details uh, logged, and I wanted to have this API log, I want to have everything. So also we, we easily could have that available for the team. So to make sure everyone is engaged with the platform. It's not, it's not something coming from the global, the headquarters, it's something that you will be able to leverage and use, right? So it was important to get the buy-in from the local team, right? To have everything that they need. So the takeaways, just moving a bit quick, guys. 
So time to market was one of the key things. So having this decision of a platform, a code base built first, was definitely a good start for Japan. We did, we, we did uh, go through some customization level, as you guys saw, um, specific for Japan. But I reckon if, if we get some, a, a different market, even, even in Brazil, from my knowledge, except for the whole tax in Brazil, which is very complex, but uh, everything else probably would be faster. So for smaller markets or for different markets, having this platform code base decision would definitely make things faster to hit the ground running for, for those countries, building, investing on this platform up front, but shipping the code and giving the flexibility. So that was an important decision. And Drupal was fundamental for that. Technology choice, so the flexibility, as I keep saying all the time. Um, the teams and the language, so uh, communication, I mean, that's, that's what we do. We work with our Chinese team, Japanese team, our team in Brazil, so English. So we, we use tools, different set of tools. We can talk about that offline for, for to make sure that all communication is, is working, the project manager, everything. Uh, and local presence. I mean, in Japan and, uh, and in China as well as we do business, it's just uh, without local presence, without someone that knows how to navigate there, it's just we can't, we wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, and another challenge that we had that I think it was important to, to bring here, that we planned, but we didn't plan so so. So good, I think, could, be, could have been better, is for data cleansing. So the site's live, it's from an old platform. So every time we try a new round of migrating the data towards the UAT phase, it's just, oh, there's something missing. Let's go back to the SQL Server team. Oh, let's do it again again. So oh, let's create a script to do a data cleansing first. Okay, let's clean up the data. Then we start the whole round of validation of this data. Right? So that's something to plan ahead. Look at the, the platform, investigate the scripts first, the data first. Um, so I, right, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead because yeah, okay. I want to yes, running out of time. Guys, important things, uh, I think that's something CINT does and I want to mention here. So as I right said, uh, giving back. So part of this project, uh, we created this field, ever right created this module, address field, specific for that, just got promoted from Sandbox. So everyone can just go start using that. Uh, we also created Claudinary is already there, Sandbox. Yeah. Good. Excuse me. Uh, there's also some code snips, snippets that we put it in GitHub. Yes, we have put it in GitHub. Okay. Yeah, yeah we put a video yeah. for that too, but uh, we're running out of time. But uh, we can also get some code. So, for example, ASP. So, if we're going to ever do a project where we're still going to have to use an ASP and authenticate against Drupal, you can use that code as well for, for OAuth. That's what they do to send the data back to Drupal in this, this, this uh, project. Um, another one that I think it's very important connects to my next, to my next topic here. Uh, Lush is not using this, but we're doing this for another customer just right now in Japan. GMO payment is uh, one of the biggest payment gateways in Japan. So uh, they work with uh, so the other platforms that uh, brew in Japan market for, for CMS and commerce. They, of course, they use that. And it, there wasn't, there was just one module with Ubercart, version six for Drupal. And uh, because of this project we're building right now for another customer, we're finalizing this in, in, in Drupal seven. So we're gonna be putting out there in June. And, um, and the expectation that we help evolve the Ubercart one, as well as create the one for Drupal eight. And I'll mention why this is important in a, in a few seconds or minutes which is connected to this, so we can finalize. Um, I think uh, what I wanted to close this session with, as I, as I promised on the ab abstract of the, of the session, is to give you guys a, a, an overview of what's going on with Drupal in that area. So since we, we are there, we're working there, and since we're here in LA, I think it's good to have this overview of what's happening on the other side of the world. Uh, in my experience so far, so two years since I moved to Australia, working dedicated with China and Japan, I think there's a lot of potential. So Dries went over there to Japan and China. He wrote a couple blog posts. He had experience with us there. He mentioned about translation, one of the challenges. But I think if we think about the potential for both markets, Japan and China, and if you see how Drupal is not there at all, it's not just small things. So there's a lot of potential. So I wanted to leave this message with you guys here. And uh, we just need to tackle those challenges together. Not only us, not only CINT, but also love to see more companies joining Japan and China because that's how we're going to build the ecosystem, bring awareness as well. 
But again, think about the, the potential in the Chinese market, all the local uh, CMS or even custom applications, legacy, you see the ASP. So there's a lot of potential there for Drupal. I think the, the first challenge that I wanted to bring here that we're working on, and I think Lush is the first thing, Lush Japan is helping here, but we wanted to do more, is things that happen here in the US with the White House, you see in Europe, the government, in Australia, the Australian government. So all those things help, bring a flagship case, something big helps, and we need to have that in China. We don't have that yet. We need to have that in Japan. We're building that up, but uh, that's, that's one important thing. It's kind of the egg and chicken. Flagship case will bring more developers, uh, and uh, business will go if there are enough developers as well, right? Translation, I think the, the, in terms of core and admin, we are in a, good, in a good situation there with the translation team. But again, like Dries mentioned, I, I, I personally spoke to him last year. We could still could do some work on sales and marketing assets. So like in Japan, when we try to pitch Drupal for different customers, it's just like, look, I can't find anything about Drupal in Japanese. Sorry, I don't trust this platform. So then we have to translate everything and then gets out of date. So there's still some work. I don't have an answer, but uh, we, there will be some opportunities here, there that would definitely make things move faster, especially again, Japan, very technical, very specialized teams. Um, GMO payment, as I said, I think as one of the biggest payment gateways, and we expect that as soon as we launch that module, that should trigger something in the ecosystem. Look, it's a one less barrier for you not to use Drupal because yes, there's a module for that major payment gateway. Or Union Pay. So in China, if you don't use Visa, most of the, the, the most accepted payment methods is Union Pay, yes. right? So uh, I, I was pushing the guys to contribute to Drupal 8 Accelerate, but then I said, look, there's no Union Pay on the on the donation website. So they couldn't say, okay, I'll do it, and then you pay me back somehow when I go there. So there are specific things that we could focus on that market that is just one less barrier for the business to say, no, I can't because you don't support this. So we can think about other things. It doesn't have to be commerce. It can be post office or post service, anything. That would, would be one less barrier to, to justify not going to, to Drupal. Talent pool, we suffer that across the world. Dries mentioned that a few times in, the, in, their, in his keynote. I think we're getting better around the world, but it's still in China and in Japan. If you look around Chav and .NET traditionally, and then you have a couple guys just in PHP. PHP is not so well seen yet. So we're building that, we're, especially in China. We're, we're building relationships with universities, creating that ecosystem. But that's something to keep an eye as well. All the initiatives we have been doing across the US, Europe, and South America, I think something we can leverage and start putting out there in the Asian markets in parallel. Yeah. And the community exists. There, there's not only a variety, there's a couple more Chinese guys here. And from Japan, I'll definitely love to meet you guys and talk about that. Uh, so Dries went over there last year, as well as in Japan. So Japan is on the other side, China here. So that was Drupal Camp Shanghai just in February. Uh, we, we, we did there together with the local team. Uh, it's there. I think in terms of business, definitely need more support. So CIT is supporting both countries now, but we, we love more help. Uh, but the, and again, the potential that they have, especially China, so big. So there's a community in Shanghai, in Beijing. Uh, in South China, but there's so much potential. The language has yes, a barrier, but if companies start looking more into that, I think we can definitely build a better and bigger ecosystem. Philip, yeah. I think we can share a demo about the contribution modules demo. Okay, so uh, where is still have some time, maybe. Yes, because that was the. Oops. Guys, as I showed this, I think that's pretty much what we had to share today. The Lush case, talk a little bit about the state of the, the, the community in Japan and China. Um, if you guys have any questions, I know we're running a bit late, but uh, feel free to just go to the mic or, yeah, or we can also, also talk. Yep. I think it's good because we can record that. Yeah, that will be great. Hello. Okay. There Hi. Um, just before I ask my question, I just want to say that I was a developer in my ja Japan myself, and I know how difficult it can be to meet the requirements of um, their needs. And I think you guys did an amazing job doing that in only like 10 months. So that was great. Really good presentation. Well, thank you. Um, my question was, um, after you handed over the project to them and, and the website, 
Um, did you have to offer some special training about how to use Japan, especially like managing the content and the products? There was a whole phase in the project just for that. So the last month was UAT along with operation testing and training. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we had to paralyze that. There was testing, but also training the whole operation, a whole month actually. Did you find it difficult to, to train train them in Drupal? Uh, so like like I, t like I said, they liked the interface, but they, they kept asking new things. Mm -hmm. So that was the challenge. But okay, I like that, but please can you change this to add another field? So that was a bit challenge, but uh, as far as Drupal, no, it was more about I want this field now, I want this type of search. So that was sure. the so back and forth, then go back to the team, do this, go back, and, yeah, sure, that's it. But um, no, not so much in the Drupal. Okay, thank you. No worries, thanks. Hi, um, this is probably a little specific to the Lush experience, but I had a question about your integration with the an external checkout or fulfillment system, and how it how and what challenges you faced um, running campaigns that flowed through multiple systems. So if you ran a, an ad campaign on on one website, which sent in traffic to the main Lush site, and then you also had the, the checkout, the external checkout and fulfillment, um, how you were able to um, pull analytics um, so that you could see that 50% sales increase or, or attribute things to what ads and, and all that. All right, so Tag Manager was a key part of it. But uh, what was important in these architectures is everything was coming through Drupal for desktop and smartphone. After you create a shopping cart, then you get redirected to the OMS. It seems seamless to the user because we kept we changed the interface, but it's a different system. So uh, the entry point for most of the usage is still Drupal from an analytics campaign standpoint, only the checkout process. But you're right, at some point, if you drop out in the checkout, how you measure that? So working with them since then, to improve the analytics and, and to analyze that drop off when you get to the checkout. Uh, but we haven't have many challenges, no, not yet. But uh, we're, we're working on improving that experience, yeah. Oh, thanks. No worries. Thanks for your great presentation today. Um, Thank you. It's been very helpful, and um, I'm actually taking on a very similar project right now, and I've never um, uh, worked on a Japanese translated site before. I, guess my employer thinks I need a new challenge. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll be watching this video and hearing me say that. <laughs> um, my question is, um, you know, for each of your internationalized sites, it, and I'm just guessing here, it looks like you guys did a separate uh, code base for each one. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and why is that? Why not, um, you know, do one massive, uh, you know, Drupal site for those translations? Or are you viewing them as distinct audiences where they wouldn't be... Uh, uh, you know, English customer wouldn't be the same as a uh, Japanese customer. And you, you also mean like hosting all together in the same instance, uh, or not necessarily that? Not necessarily. I mean, there's okay. plenty of ways you could, you know, yeah. architect that. I think there's a, there was a decision of like, giving flexibility and avoiding back and forth in terms of the governance. Mm -hmm. So I think the governance piece, especially being on the other side of the world, was a decision that let's take. Look, look, mm -hmm. let's give that freedom. But there's still some governance around, okay, if you notice something that is more generic, we can bring it back to the code base. Mm -hmm. But um, but they wanted to keep it, because different teams will be building that. It wouldn't be the same I see. UK team that started this. So um, if it was the same team, it would be easier. Like for CINT doing the whole thing, for example, it would be easier to manage that, I think. So you, you add an extra level, and you have four months to deliver. So, uh, But you're right. I think that would be probably one, one good yeah. decision that if you have time and have the teams to do it. Are yeah. users on the UK site shared with the Japanese no, site? Are they no, no. separate? Totally, totally separate. separate. No, no, totally worlds. separate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, thank you. No worries. How are you? I'm in the middle of a big redesign with thousands of uh, articles and pieces of content, and one of the big challenges of a redesign is losing your SEO ranking when you uh, change URLs and aliases and things like that. What was your approach to make sure that you kept, uh, you know, took the l minimal amount of hit with a redesign on that? Do you? I don't know if I, I wasn't. You mean SEO? Yes, uh, for the old. Hi. Uh, for the SEO, we uh, just uh, uh, import the old uh, large site. Uh, to Drupal site with uh, CSV file. They have uh, exported the uh, exist URLs in the old uh, OMS and give us. So we have used uh, 
uh, the direct import module to import all the SEO. So you kept the same path same alias. aliases? And yes, like same that. alias. Okay, thank you. Right. The Exactly. That, that's really what we're looking at. But I just wanted to make sure that if there's anything else that we're yeah, missing. Yeah, we just import it and, and, and did it all. Yeah, because yeah, our, our site is a mess. It's a legacy site from 2006, and there's a lot of um, you know file directory structure we need to clean up and and stuff like that. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. I guess that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Oh, we are out there in the. Thank you. We're out there in the booth. We have a booth there. So if you want to stop by and have a chat, uh, we'd love to hear more, more case, anything. Thank you.